In the start of the new year, a lot of people make a resolution to lose weight. And in this video, I want to cover a company that actually helps people meet their goals. And so as you guys smash that like button, let me run that intro. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Now this is a company that a lot of the Patreons who have had, had access to the tracker have known that this company exists and known that it's in my opinion at least relatively undervalued and what company I'm talking about well it's a company by the name of Medifast now what was interesting is I was actually talking to some of the patreons on the discord today none of us really understood why the stock went down you know nine percent intraday and then it closed uh, about seven and a half percent down today and my suspicions is that there just happens to be a lot of short interest in the name um, as gross profit margins decline but before I get into that I just wanted to show you what exactly the company does. I don't really know where their presentation deck went on their website, but that's fine. I'll describe the company using just what they have in their 10K. And so you can see that, you know, they are a um, health and wellness company. They operate the Octavia uh, weight loss brand. And really what it is, is Octavia is a product that's sold by coaches that provide individual support and guidance to customers who are trying to lose weight. So effectively, really what it is, is uh, people will sign up to work with a Octavia based coach and uh, the Octavia based coach will earn a commission on the products that they sell. So effectively it's affiliate marketing. It's really geared towards this new digital creator economy. I mean, and we see this all the time. There's ton of uh, even YouTubers in the finance space that earn affiliate income. Like one company that has reached out to me uh, whose product that I use is Seeking Alpha and they want me to um, sell their product. I just haven't gotten back to them yet because I'm lazy uh, with respect to getting sponsorships and stuff. I really don't care. I've never really cared about making money. Uh, it's more just about providing uh, value into the community. But this happens, you know, you see people sell products, people have Amazon links. It is just the way of the digital economy. And, you know, leveraging digital creators to sell weight loss products is nothing new. And Octavia just found an interesting way to do it. Uh, or Medifast found an interesting way to do it, which, you know, aligns with uh, the direction that the world is going, in my opinion, at least. And, you know, you can see that Medifast shares have actually dropped 43% in the last year. And, you know, the reason why the shares have dropped so much is for two reasons. The first reason is that margins are contracting in a higher inflationary environment. They just can't pass the cost increases as much over to their consumers. The second reason is that I do believe that revenue is going to start contracting significantly. Now, revenue has not contracted as much, um, and I'll show you what the numbers look like. However, in 2023, I actually think revenue is going to contract even more than what the analysts are predicting. And so I'll dive into that with you guys in this video. Now, first, I just wanted to start with the analysts think. So you can see that there's only actually one analyst that covers the name. And it looks like she sees pain in the share price over the next year, which of course is likely in a higher inflation uh, slash weaker consumer market. So the uh, the um, sh average target or the target is $106 per share, which is actually lower, you know, 10% lower than where the shares are trading at today. And of course, you can see that, you know, she was a bull on the share price of the security even throughout 2022, where her share price was, I don't know, in the $330 per share range. But look how quickly she just sort of gave up on the security. And so, you know, I don't see the intrinsic value of a company dropping by more than half in just six months. But I guess at the end of the day, analysts provide one year price targets. And so, yeah, the company could be pressured over one year. But what exactly is the intrinsic value of the company? And that's sort of like what I try to model out. Now, my valuation, even back in 2022, was around here. I remember I was going to, the, going to a beach while I was valuing this company right before we left for the beach. And I remember I valued it somewhere around here in mid-2022. And it's just largely stayed there. So um, I don't see... Uh, a huge degradation in the value of the company, despite the fact that there's near term challenges. Look, there's always going to be challenges. No company uh, is um, immune from having troubles uh, as a result of something being their fault or as a result of something being uh, an issue in the overall economy. But, you know, it goes to show 
uh, what exactly analyst uh, price expectations really represent. It just represents where they believe that the price will be over the next year, and it does not reflect the intrinsic value of the company, which opens up opportunities for us as value investors. And before I go even further, I just want to say full disclosure, I do own this name in the portfolio. I just want to be completely transparent about that. But notice, the analyst expects revenue and EPS to remain stable throughout 2024. And so with a share price of $117 per share, what she expects in terms of earnings per share, you just take that and divide it by the 117, you are essentially expecting an equity yield of 11.3%. Uh, percent. So of course, going the other way, this divided by that, you're looking at a PE multiple, a forward PE multiple of less than 10 times earnings. And so I'm going to show you why this doesn't make sense, at least in my opinion, even if you just look compare it to historical growth rates. But of course, you can see there is no growth essentially no growth being forecasted. Now, what I find interesting is um, I think some more work needs to be done here. And the reason for it, or, you know, I might just not understand how the model is built because, I, of course, I haven't seen her model. But, you know, expecting the same amount of um, uh, revenue in 2023 uh, you know, 1.6 billion compared to 1.59 in 2022. I don't know. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think revenue will be challenged and I'll show you why I think revenue is going to be challenged. Um, so, I mean, this might still be somewhat optimistic. Um, I don't think EPS will come in at the same rate, actually higher in 2023 than it is expected to come in at 2022 either. And despite that, I still really like the company. Now, here's my model that you can get access to at the Patreon lower tier level and you can actually get access to all of my models. Now, here's the thing this is the historical growth of the company so you can see um dan chard their current ceo um, he actually helped the company change their business strategy to be like a coach-led affiliate selling business model in around the 2016 2017 uh time period and so historicals uh prior to 2016 are no use uh to sort of gauge future revenue growth however look what happened to the company you know they grew year revenue 10 in 2017 66 percent thereafter 42 percent 31 63 so like this has been an extremely fast revenue growing company and of course the margins um you know they declined a little bit in the later years, but you know, this is still a strong gross profit margin at 74%. That's in my opinion, exceptional. And then of course, operating profit margins are pretty high as well in the double digits. So, you know, this is a good company to suggest that they will never have growth in the future. Just based on this doesn't make sense, but just thinking logically, you know, absent of any like substantially um, life-changing competitor, which there isn't in the market, just thinking logically of the direction that the digital creator economy is going, it makes no sense to forecast zero growth in uh, 2024, at least, I would say. I mean, you know, we only saw two years of growth for the analysts, and the analysts might be right. You know, it might go down in 2023 and then just come back to 20, in 2024. But you know, forecasting perpetual 0% growth. And I'm not saying that's what the analyst is doing because I, I didn't see the model. But if you were to forecast that, I think you'd be making a mistake. And so I don't know if their intrinsic value has changed significantly uh, as a result of this decline. And you should have been expecting a decline anyways because we knew way back in 2000, or 2021 that there was going to be a slowdown as a result of all the easy money. And so what would that do to a company like Medifast who relies on discretionary consumers uh, purchasing. Of course, you'd sort of expect that to come down. Now, some people would argue that it's not discretionary spending. I would argue that it is kind of in that discretionary space. Like if you are looking to save money, one of the areas where you can save money is just not by purchasing as much of those weight loss products and probably go about it just um, eating uh, healthier options at home or something along those lines and not spending more money uh, than you need to. And so this is how I'm forecasting out the business. So you can see that, yeah, they're going to grow revenues. And this is primarily in line with management guidance. I'm less optimistic than the analyst community for 2023. I think it can be a rough year and I'm expecting the top line to decline by at least 10% and then no uh, revenue growth in 2024. So in fact, if you compare my revenue models with the analysts, I'm actually more pessimistic. I'm actually saying revenue goes backwards. And so, you know, it's essentially saying that I believe in the next uh, couple of years less than the analyst community. But, you know, I, I do expect 5% revenue growth in 2025 and then 5% again in 2026. And so, you know, I do expect growth to inevitably pick back up. Um, I did bring gross profit margins down. I do bring them up later on. So that's okay, I guess. 
and the profit margins are down to that 12% range where you saw them previously. They were in that 14% range. I bring that back in 2026. And so, you know, largely this is a pessimistic model on purpose, but I really think 2023 could even be worse than this. So I'm just kind of, I think this is kind of like down the middle of the road, uh, despite the analysts not uh, agreeing with me here, but we'll see how this plays out. And so when it comes to the valuation, just using a 15 times multiple. Now notice that this company has historically had like a 23 to 25 times multiple, but just using a 15 times earnings multiple, uh, you know, based on the current share price, the company's trading at less than 50% of its intrinsic value. So that's very interesting. So the question that I have is if a company's this undervalued, why has the share price declined by almost 10% today? Like almost on no news. And I did do some digging just to find anything, you know, and this is some like not really like well reputable website or whatever. I just typed in Medifast and just clicked on the news link for Google. And it, I noticed that, you know, it was a significant uh, a recipient of a significant increase in short interest during the month of December. So, you know, about 6% of the company stocks are sold short. So that's not high by any stretch of the imagination. And so, um, you know, some people could be expecting the share price to decline as they have a bad Q4. I kind of expect that too. I, I very much see Medifast trading under $100 per share in 2023. And so, you know, um, for those short term shorts, I think, you know, it makes a lot of sense, especially in this environment. So that's fine. But, you know, once again, I haven't found any news that uh, says that the company is, um, you know, significantly less valued today than it was a couple of days ago. However, this is just the market. The market just, you know, uh, goes one way and then it goes the other. It's just noise. I don't really pay attention to it anyways. And you can see these are the latest results that they uh, put out. So you can see revenue is actually up 10% on a nine month basis. But you know, the uh, in the recent quarter, you can see that revenue actually declined um, by five and a half percent. Margins were actually higher, interestingly enough. Um, but of course, on a um, uh, on a year over year basis, the margins ha actually have gone down by a percentage point. And so, you know, we could expect the margins to continue to decline as well as revenue to continue to decline. So we'll see how this plays out in the future. And so one of the things that I did work on with the Patreons today, and you guys might not realize this, but when you get access to that tracker at that lower tier, you also get access to the Discord. And I'm um, available in the Discord. I try to make myself available, uh, you know, at least at lunchtime if I'm not too busy. And I did work with some of the Patreons uh, just to take a look at uh, some of the cash secured puts on this day. Now, none of this is ever a recommendation or anything along those lines, but you can see that um, using today's date, uh, I just threw in the ticker, um, the exchange and um, the exercise date, which is the June 16, 2023 cash secured put, because this is the free cash secured put calculator that you can get access to in the uh, description of this video below. You know, at the $110 strike price, uh, which gets you around a $10 per share premium, it might be lower now, it might be higher, I don't know. Um, you know, you get a current yield of 9%, but annualized, um, it's a 22% yield. So some of the people on the discord did sell this. Now, this is not a recommendation to sell this. I have not sold this for my own portfolio, but you know, really what it's saying is you are tying up your capital for a annualized 22% yield. And if you get exercised at $110 per share, despite the shares trading at 117 right now, um, you have a net purchase price of $100 per share with an intrinsic value of $249 per share if you believe in my valuation. Now, I don't know if the uh, people who exercise this believe in my valuation. They very well could not. Um, but in my opinion, this is kind of like a win-win. You make 22% or you buy the company at 40% of its intrinsic value. So the question I have for you guys is what do you think about this opportunity? What do you think about weight loss companies in general? Is this something that excites you for your portfolio? And what do you think about just analyzing the cash secured put um, type of opportunity in this situation. I don't think you could go wrong just by buying the shares outright, considering that they're trading at under 50% of their intrinsic value. But the other thing that I want to know is, am I too optimistic on this name? Let me know what you guys think. Now, the other thing uh, that I want you guys to be aware of is that there was some news yesterday about Ryan Cohen actually investing in Alibaba and asking them to issue or uh, do more share buybacks. And so if you missed that video, you can get to it right here.